Romans chapter 11 verse 13 there's a scripture I want to to look at in different versions we shall start with maybe the amplified it says but now I'm speaking to you who are Gentiles in as much then as I, I am an apostle to the Gentiles I lay great stress on my ministry and magnify my office. I lay great stress on my ministry and magnify my office. So we see in this verse the Apostle Paul was very clear about who he was. He knew. And actually, when you read different letters, you see him starting off by, I, Paul, an apostle by God's grace. He, he knew. It's important that you know. Okay? It's important that you, you know what your assignment is. Okay? He says, in as much as I'm an apostle to the Gentiles, he even knew the people he was assigned to, he knew. He knew the people he was assigned to. Hallelujah. Are you with me so far? As much as I'm an apostle to the Gentiles, he knew the people he was assigned to. He says, I lay great stress on my ministry. So after discovering who you are, you have to, this morning my sharing is on give thyself holy. Eh? After discovering that which God has called you to do, Give yourself to it completely. Lay great stress on it. Give it your best. Hallelujah. Give it your best. Compete against yourself. It's entire which has that uh, motto. Better your best. Eh? Instead of being preoccupied with what so and so is doing, be preoccupied with what so and so is not doing. Preoccupy yourself with your ministry. Lay great stress to it. Do whatever you have to do to make it better. Ah, I, I know that God has given me a church to pastor, churches to oversee. I lay great stress on that ministry. I, have, I, I read. I try to study. I pray. I, you know, I've read Papa's Riven Church. I have tried to practice the principles in there. I share things with my pastors. I keep talking to them, sharing with them things to read. Um, Things to listen to. I get into the book. I read it while praying. I do. I lay great stress on my ministry. I lay great stress on my ministry. I I I discover what God has given me to, and I am determined. I'm not perfect. I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do fully. But I'm trying my best. I ask you a question. Are you trying your best with what God has given you? He says, I, 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 I lay great stress. I magnify my office. I magnify. Do it until everybody starts talking about it. Until everybody starts talking about you. Until everybody says you are overdoing it. Do it. Think about how you can grow it. Think about how you can become better at it. 
So as much as I am an apostle, there is a scripture in, uh, I want to show you this, but let's first see um, Romans 11, 13 in the, I want you to see it in the message, the message translation. Ah, are you getting this? You have to lay great stress. If your gift is hospitality, give it your best. If your gift is serving others, give it your best. If your gift is giving, give it your best, you know. But I don't want you to go on about them. That's what it says. It's you, the outsiders that I'm concerned with now. Because my personal assignment is focused on the so-called outsider. I make much of this as I can. <laughs> you hear that? I make much of this. Make much of it. Talk about it. Don't fear. Don't 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 apologize when people say, Pastor, I say, I'm just a brother. You are a pastor. I don't, I don't even I don't like titles. Ah, you are a pastor. Ah, I'm, just a, I'm just a brother. You are a pastor. You are an apostle. You are a teacher. You are make 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 noise about do ah. lay great stress on the ministry. Magnify your office. If you pray for somebody, they get healed. Talk about it for the next one month. Pray for others. Pray for pray for whoever. Talk everywhere you are. Go announce that I also heal the sick. If anybody here is sick, come to me. Do what my daughter Helen sometimes it does things. She she writes on her she goes on her status says if you are sick. Inbox me right now. I want to pray for you. <laughs> I love my daughter Helen. So if you if you're sick, inbox me right now. I want to pray. Get into my inbox. Ah, magnify your office. Lay great stress on it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Magnify your office. Paul told Timothy. First, uh, Second Timothy chapter one verse six. He says, "Fan into flame, fan into flame, fan it." You know. Let's see that scripture. Second Timothy chapter one verse six. He told him, "Fan into flame the gift that is in you, the gift that is in you." Eh? Don't. You know, don't fall in the trap of, you know, there are people who they are endlessly analyzing, you know, is it this, is it that, is my gift this? So they are studying for years what their gifts are. Uh -uh. If you get a hint, throw yourself into the thing and fan it into flame. If it's not the one, you have not failed. You have succeeded in discovering the one which is not. Ah, that is why I would remind you to start up, to rekindle the embers of, fan the flame of, and keep burning the gracious gift of God, the inner fire. Ah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Fan it into flame. Preach, 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 preach to the first one, preach to the second, preach to the third, fan it into flame. Let me tell you, these gifts, they get better. You, the gifts doesn't get better. You get better at it with use. The gift doesn't get better. It is you who gets better at using it. You don't just keep saying, yeah, I'm called to heal the sick. I'm called to heal the sick. I'm uh -uh. You have to step out and start doing it. Start doing it. Then you realize if you're praying, you're praying, 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 and they're not getting sick. Then when you get concerned, you go back to God. <laughs> you know the disciples, when they prayed for that boy and the guy couldn't get healed, at night they came to Jesus. Say, why couldn't we cast it out? <laughs> yeah, 
you, you, when you try things and they don't work, that's when you go back to God. That's when you go in prayer and fasting. That's when you say, Lord, I think I'm gifted to do this. Why is it not working? Then he will teach you, ah, ah it's unbelief. Ah, you need to deal with this. Ah, that one, it's another method. It's not laying on of hands. That one, you should have cast out a demon. That one was a spirit. You had to cast it out. Ah, ah, that one, you should have spoken to the mountain. Ah, that one, you should have, you should have told them to stretch out their hand. You know, you discover there are different ways. Ah. Are you getting this? Fan it into flame. Start it up. Start it up. That which you have discovered, that which you have an idea of, fan it. Fan it into flame. Yeah. Fan it into flame. Use it. Don't, don't, you know, I'm not going to do another, another week of discovering more. Then I do another week of more about the work which you are created to do. Then another week of a deeper a, a deeper uh, what a deeper study of what we are created to do then I do uh, seven ways of getting to know how it is ah uh, no now when you get an idea dive into it give yourself holy give yourself holy fan into flame you know you know how they light charcoal stoves you know after lighting putting there your fire whatever then we used to get you get a plate or something and start blowing start blowing until you see all the charcoal start catch fire and what you get that fan it into flame you have to fan the gift yeah i tell you the truth i tell you the truth when we start this is the 28th seminar but when we started i was not teaching things like this but after doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it we are getting better the prayer leaders are getting better the session leaders are getting better because we are we are fanning into flame we, we we've been at it and we we, we we lay great stress to it we magnify our office you know i don't i don't feel now i you know i put the thing on my status you know, I share with people, I invite them, I tell them, you need to attend this, you'll be blessed. What? You, I get into their inbox, what? I lay great stress to it. Yeah, I believe that uh, what I have is important for the body of Christ, and I want everybody to know. Yeah, and there are those who should have the work of making everybody know. You know? Yeah. Like I have this you, you, you should make it like you magnify your you, you you make it your duty to make the whole world know about this seminar yeah i i'm sure we are not yet doing it very well or some people are not yet doing what they are supposed to do that's why we never break the barrier of, of a hundred you know we never get that good problem of reaching a hundred and people say i i can't enter i can't join because because some people just privately have their link. They privately have their link. They keep it somewhere. They log on to it. They quietly join. Quietly stay. Quietly exit. Quietly join. Quietly here. Quietly exit. Quietly join. Quietly here. Quietly exit. Quietly join. Jesus. Tell somebody. Tell somebody about this. Throw the thing on your family group. If they if they eject you, they will eject you. Throw the thing on your group of business people. Throw the thing there. Throw the flyer there. Say, you people, there is something happening in our nation. There is a man of God in the city. <laughs> Magnify your office. Like, <laughs> there's somebody, they ask, why do you always have that man on your status? Those are always putting flyers. What? 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 Then they ask me, why, why do you always have them? They should also have somebody on their status. Why are they asking? Ah, 
Glory to God. Are you getting me? Make a big fuss out of it. Make a big deal out of this. Out of what God has told you to do. Make a big deal out of it. Make a big deal. You know, this there's a verse which always drives me. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. It says, never lag in zeal. Never. Hey, you can even hear the force as Paul is saying that. In Romans chapter 12 verse 11. It says, never lag. Never lag in zeal. Never. Never lag in zeal. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. Eh? Never. I pray that somebody, this verse will always ring in your head. Never lag in zeal. Always have zeal. Eh? Never lag in zeal. An honest endeavor. Be aglow and burning with the Spirit. Serving the Lord. I must serve the Lord. I must burn with the Spirit. Serving the Lord. Like full time. 24 hours. 7 days a week. Burning with the Spirit. Serving the Lord. Full-time ministry. Don't think that full-time ministry means resigning your job, whatever. Uh -uh. Paul was a full-time minister making tents on the side. Yeah. I'm a full-time minister who teaches on the side. Works in the hospital on the side. But I'm a full-time minister who sometimes also treats patients. Are you getting this? You have to look at it the other way around. Those other people say, ah, they think full-time is resigning your job. What? No. Your full-time minister who also uh, does a job here and there to get some money to eat lunch and supper and to give to the work of God. Yeah. Ooh. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Are you getting this? Never lag in zeal. Never lag in zeal. If your thing is ushering, usher with zeal. Eh? This is like, oh, like you're carrying their Bible. Ask them, are they okay carrying their bags? You know, are you okay? After ushering them, showing them where to sit, you come and check on them. Is that seat okay? Or should I change your position? Is, is, are you feeling okay? You know, is the air okay? <laughs> you're on their case. Ah. Kundabasa. Hey. You, you be something else. You be something else. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Like, you know, do you know somebody can decide I'm coming back next Sunday because of an usher? That, that usher was too much. I have to go back to that church. Oh! <laughs> At church we have something called Aaron. Each one rich one each month. And there are people who are, <laughs> they, they have taken it to, they, they will invite you. And they will invite you. And they will invite you. <laughs> There's one who someone said, I'll give you feedback. That one says, I don't want your feedback. For me, I want to see you in church. That's the feedback I want. <laughs> ah, you know. We must never lag in zeal. Glory to God. Never lag in zeal. Just always be hyper. Let them call you hyper. Be, he's hyper. He's hyper. Yes, I think it is okay to be hyper as far as serving God. Never let anybody make you feel what that, you know, feel bad when she's hyper. Yeah. Yeah. I only have one life to live. Let me be hyper in that life serving God. I don't have 10 lives. I don't have one. I only have one life to live. I don't know how many years I have. So the years I have now, let me be hyper. Hey, let me serve God. Let me show off. Let me do this. We must do the work while it is day. Night is coming when nobody will work. So while it is day, I'm going to be hyper. I'm going to preach and preach and preach 
and preach, the flyers will be over. The flyers will be all over the place. When people think we have kept quiet, there is a flyer for another seminar. When people think that, you know, then there is a flyer for the Bible school. When people think that, ah, now they are resting, then there is a flyer for transformed conference. When people think, ah, what has happened? Then they are saying, ah, we are back on TV to catch us on this channel. When people think that, ah, no, we have campus night. We must be hyper. Ah, I must give myself holy. Last verse, First Timothy chapter four, verse fifteen. Are you with me? We must do. We must give ourselves holy. Whatever it is that God has given, right now I release the grace upon you to give yourself holy to this work. I give you. I release. The grace I release impartation upon you to give yourself holy. You see that verse? I love it in the Amplified. It says, practice and cultivate and meditate upon those duties. Practice, cultivate, meditate upon those duties. Throw yourself holy. Like, throw yourself holy. Ah, have you read that verse? Throw yourself wholly into them as your ministry. That which you have an idea, you are saying, I have an idea, I have an idea. Throw yourself wholly into it. Yeah. If you fail, you will fail trying to serve God. It, it, it is better to fail trying to serve God than to fail just sitting on your chair, just being quiet. Do you know they never talk about the guys who stayed in the boat? Have you ever realized? They talk about Peter and how he walked on the water and started sinking. But you know he was with other guys? They just kept saying, okay, Peter, he has overdone it this time. And we always tell him, we always tell him, this guy, he over risks. They were there in the boat, over talking, just. We, know, we don't even hear about them. They never talk about those guys. There is no verse dedicated to people who stay in the boat. You need to reduce these things. Eh? You need, you are there. Sunday you're there. Monday you're there. Wednesday you're there. You know, Sunday you're there. For you, you can't miss any Sunday. Why should I miss? I have one life to live. Why should I miss? Practice. Cultivate. Throw yourself holy. Give yourself holy. Hallelujah. Give yourself holy into this thing. Let them say, oh, oh, Let them say that. <laughs> Let them say, You're drunk of ministry. Let them say, You're drunk of Jesus. Let them say, Let them say, Let them say, Let them say. Let them say. As in the yes. Yeah. The Bible says, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. It compares being filled with the Holy Spirit with being drunk. <laughs> Meditate upon this. Day. Throw yourself wholly into them as your ministry, so that your progress will be evident. You, your progress will only come when you throw yourself wholly. That's how progress will happen. When you give yourself to the work. Amen? Amen. When you give yourself, that's when progress will come. You know, I, you know, the people I work with, they know, I give myself, I be there, then I'm calling them. Have you called this person? Have you called the person of sand? Have you, you know, I give myself, I pass by, I pass by to supervise at odd hours, you know, and I'm saying, yeah, we have done this. Then I said, but I'm there. It's not done. No. You have to give yourself holy, holy to the work. Hallelujah. Put flowers. If yours is putting flowers in the church, just do it. Put flowers every Sunday, you know. Arrange those chairs. Use it. Get a string even. 
so that they are in such a straight line. Ah, put a string, put a ruler, put, put a, ah, let them find you, ah. Sweep the thing until there is no dirt. Somebody can even sit on the floor with their white suit. Ah! Throw yourself holy. Today, I was telling you to give yourself fully to the work. Give yourself fully. Somebody will benefit. Somebody is waiting for you to give yourself fully. Somebody will get healed if you give yourself holy. Somebody will hear the gospel if you give yourself holy. Yeah, give yourself. Practice, meditate, cultivate those duties. Find into flame. Walk around, preach the gospel. Invite people to church. Invite people to your church. Invite people to your church. It's Rick Warren who said, I don't know if it's Rick Warren or Doug Hayward. You know, I read so many things. So, yeah, I just know it's one of them. He said that you should be concerned if your members never invite people to your church. It should tell you an idea about the kind of church it is or the kind of pastor you are. If your members never invite their friends to their church. <laughs> They may just be surviving in the church. They may just be hanging in there by a thread. They may just be in there. Because what will they say if they leave? Uh -uh. If you're in the church because of what people will say if you leave, please go to the other place. Okay. You need to be in the place that you celebrate, that you talk about that you love, like every conversation ends up to, people are like, they, they, they start calling you my church, my church, because you're always saying my church, my church. It becomes your middle name, my church. But if you're always quiet, God does not have a secret service, but I'm a secret member of that church. So, no, God doesn't run a secret service. Hallelujah. Amen.